And tonight on The Probe, we revisit the pronouncement by President Kufando last week during the State of the Nation Address in Parliament. According to President Kufando, his government has built more roads than any other government in the Fourth Republic. Well, this is not the first time the President is making that statement, except to say that this time round, the first gentleman of the land has provided a document he calls the evidence to back his claims. So what's contained in this document and overall what's been the performance of President Akufado in the roads and highways sector? That's up for the pro tonight and my guest is the Deputy Minister for Roads and Highways and MP for Pro West, Stephen Jalula. He will tell us what's contained in that document and overall what's been the performance of his government in that sector the program as always is uh, interactive is on facebook is on the join news channel join 99.7 fm and also our affiliates across the country love 99.5 is in kumasi be my guest when we return we get into the details i'm blessed to go and welcome once again to the pro Mr. Speaker, it is in the road sector that we have registered the greatest infrastructure achievement. I know that the word unprecedented is often used with careless abandon in our public discourse, but I use it carefully and purposefully. In the five years of my government, so far more roads have been built improved and upgraded than that at any equivalent period under any government in the history of Ghana. Some, some 10,885 kilometers of new roads have been constructed in these five years. Let me mention, Mr. Speaker, that yesterday it was my honor and great pleasure to have commissioned the Tamale Interchange. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, I would like to state categorically that this government has built more roads than any government in the history of the Fourth Republic. And Mr. Speaker, and Mr. Speaker, the details of all these roads are attached in the annex to this message. I have done so because last year when I made a similar pronouncement, I was met with howls and gasps of incredulity from the minority benches. And so I thought it appropriate this time to present it as an annex to the statement. Which will be part of Henza. So that's the latest statement from the president and that document that the president is referring to is with us here tonight in the studio and uh, of course earlier you listened to the same speech he made before parliament in 2022 indicating that his government has built more roads than any other administration in the fourth republic so let's get to the document that we're referring to and of course uh, helping us to do that discussion is the deputy minister responsible for roads and highways uh, Stephen jalula thank you for joining us here on the probe Thank you, Blessed uh, Suga, for having me. And I'm sure that you're in Parliament at the time the President was making the statement. Uh, Indeed. Many say when he was making the statement, a lot would have been running through your mind, knowing that you would have to do that job of the explanation. Indeed. Um, since I represent the good people of Pro West, I had to be there. I was there. And I was happy that the President made that uh, particular pronouncement mm -hmm. on the 
uh, amount of kilometers that he has done in six years. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. And That's I knew that it's our responsibility to right. come here and explain to the good people of Ghana mm. what he has indeed done for, for them. In fact, there's a lot unfolding because uh, the statement of the president is um, bringing up a lot of debates. The minority side disagrees with the president. We'll get to it shortly. Uh, but when the president uses the word, the, the word built, the word built, that, that's the word of the president. In what context is he referring to that statement by saying we have built more roads? Are you talking about new roads, completely new infrastructure that you've put up as a government? Very well. Let me take this opportunity to um, extend my uh, warmest uh, greetings to your viewers across the globe, wherever they are. And uh, to answer your question, if the president uses the word built, mm -hmm. it means construct. And in, the, in, in engineering terms, when they say construct a road, it could mean periodic maintenance routine maintenance, minor improvements, and new developments. So when he said, when he used the word built, mm -hmm. he meant all of that except the routine maintenance, right? Routine maintenance normally means vegetation controls, the silting of drainage, uh, graveling, and uh, reshaping and others. Now, when you come to um, periodic, okay. it means uh, maintenance that takes... Uh, a longer interval to be done, mm. okay? And that one includes uh, the rich, I mean, drain, one moment, yeah. um, spot improvements, okay? okay? And regraveling. Mm -hmm. Spot improvement means that uh, critical sections of a road, um, a road has been damaged and maybe needs uh, refilling, uh, maybe a sub base must be redone again to improve the uh, riding condition of the then regraveling. Okay. It means that the base of a unpaved road has to be redone again okay. because the condition has uh, deteriorated. Now we also have resealing, which is uh, normally referred to uh, bituminous surface, mm -hmm. maybe uh, we call coal tar, mm -hmm. a road that had been uh, coal tarred before but has deteriorated with cracks and other things. So that one also means that resealing it to protect the assets. So the president is basically redefining built. Is Not fair, really, because Ghanaians mm -hmm. pay money. Mm -hmm. Development partners invest money in the road sector. So whatever the president meant by built means that mm -hmm. any money the taxpayer pays into the development of roads, whatever development partners bring, including even private sector, mm -hmm like the Goldfields, the Newmont Company, they all invest into the road. I'm asking the question because I've been looking through the document and that's what you have right before you. Uh, for instance, last year, the president talks about 10,875 kilometers of stretch that was completed. That number shot at this year uh, because you claim uh, to have added some 1,000 more. That, that's the number you've added. Uh, but let's, let's take it from last year. When, when you say you've constructed 10,875 kilometers of road, are you referring to entirely new ones? No. If a government could do 10,000 roads mm -hmm. in uh, one term, right. I'm sure that we now even have bad roads in the Ghana. Ghana. Mm -hmm. It's meant what I was just trying to define. Mm -hmm. Everything except periodic uh, routine maintenance. Okay. It means anything that the government has invested money to improve the road access in the country. That's what he meant by that. So the, New pre roads, so the president lied about, about saying they've built more roads? Yes, building, as I told you. You mm -hmm. asked me the context, the context in which mm -hmm. he, 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 he used the word built. Mm -hmm. And I said it meant periodic maintenance as well, not entirely new. We have new development of roads. Mm -hmm. And if you look in the document, it's 600, some 615 kilometers mm -hmm. or so of roads that are entirely new that he built. Okay. All other ones were periodic, sorry, uh, periodic yeah. new development mm -hmm. and then sports improvements. Yes, if you ask me, that's what- So, so if you look at the proportion, it appears that you've done less of construction as compared to more of repair works. No. Repair yeah, works because are, the figures are speaking to yes, them. Yes, the repair works mm -hmm. are part of construction work. Because if you have an asset, you don't repair it, what happens? It deteriorates and it gets bad. 
and it causes a lot of accident and uh, damage to our vehicles that we... we Stephen Jadula, your government promised that you are going to build roads for the people of Ghana. Uh, when you were promising that as the new patriotic party, were you giving the impression that, well, we are going to repair some of the old roads and that's what we're... Indeed, that, that's what we meant. Because if you live in a suburb where the road was bituminous, but over time, two, three years, it deteriorates. Mm. You can't even use it. Those roads are even uh, more difficult to use than even on paved road. What happens? Should we leave it like that and go and do new roads or we should come back to your road and get it done? So we are talking about all roads that the taxpayers' money goes into maintaining, including the new ones. That's what it means. It doesn't mean that entirely new roads, 10,000, 11,000, as we speak now, were done by Nana Adudan Kwakufaro. That is not what we meant. I'm sorry if that is your understanding. So why do you need to explain that to the people of Ghana? You know, we are in a profession that is uh, engineering, mm -hmm. okay, and sometimes if you use these technical terms and indeed not every person will understand we need to come like this and explain to the good people of ghana to let them know the technicalities involved in the the, the road industry or in the engineering industry are you saying that if we speak to an average engineer today yep. and we're using the word building yes. of new roads that engineer technically speaking would not Take that as a blanket statement to say we've no, constructed new. No rules. engineer worth his salt would take it blanketly, like you are saying. At least we know we had very bad roads, mm -hmm. roads that were engineered years back that deteriorated over time. But uh, His Excellency Nanado Dankwa has come to to do even asphalt overlay mm -hmm. that most people in the big cities of Kumasi, Accra, Takra, De Tamale, all over are enjoying. Are considered as part of the rules that Nanado Dankwa Akufado built. There's a challenge coming up about the number of interchanges that were, uh, of course, put up. Uh, the minority is raising questions about the number that you're talking about because, in this very document that is before us, you point to the fact that up until 2016, the country uh, was managing five major facilities when it comes to overpasses or interchanges as we know them to be. Then you claim that the president added six more, correct? And that seven more will be completed by the end of 2024. The minority is taking you on that one. They believe that some of the uh, figures that you're putting out is, is not accurate. What, what's your side of the story on that? Well, um, I think the good people of Ghana are witnesses to the work that the, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana mm -hmm. Dankwa Kufado, through my boss, the Honorable Amakwata MP for Etiwa West, has done for the good people of Ghana. Mm -hmm. It's evident mm -hmm. across the length and breadth of the country. Yes, indeed, it's true. What we stated in our, uh, if NDC book was the green book, mm -hmm. ours can be considered as a white book because mm -hmm. that's the honest uh, uh, data that we have in our ministry. And let me add that this data that we are providing today was not data provided by the NPP headquarters or any, it was done by the Ministry of Rules yeah. together with the, our agencies. Yeah. Now, the record says that the NDC completed mm -hmm. five interchanges, and I can name them Coming Chroma Circle, mm -hmm. Ring Road, Flyover, mm -hmm. Kaswa Interchange, Gifford Road, Airport Hills Road uh, Interchange. Right. Now, that is the fact. If you come on our side, we so far we've done six. Mm -hmm. And even the number seven that we gave you was just a conservative figure, excluding mm -hmm. the four interchanges that we are building on the Ofanko to Nsawom Road. And, and on that one, for instance, uh, if we could just have that on the screen, the, uh, the minority chief whip, who, who happens to be the ranking on the roads and highways committee in parliament, is taking you on that one. He believes that there's a bit of a nuance to what we're dealing with. Because for instance, uh, and, and if we could just have that on the screen right now, he's touch, touching on the, uh, for instance, Pokwasi interchange. You claim that, for instance, the Pokwasi interchange uh, is a creation of this NPP administration. Uh, he explains that, for instance, funding, uh, and if we could, uh, of course, get that, we'll get that for you shortly. F funding, funding 
uh, for that was, uh, of course, so here you have it on the screen. Uh, of course, it's by Kwame Gavins Abuja. He's the member, member of parliament for uh, Adaklu in the Volta region. He's put up a long statement, uh, but I just wanted to go to the part where he's talking about the uh, Pokwasi interchange because uh, on the issue of the interchange, and there you have it, he says that the ministry claims that the award date for the Pokwasi interchange was 27th of February 2018. And he believes that that is not accurate, first of all, but it is contrived to, quote, mislead the public. On the contrary, the facts show that the Pokwasi interchange project commenced when funding of the 83 million was secured in September 2016 from the African Development Bank to support the Accra Urban Transport Project in order to improve the road infrastructure in the greater Accra region. And then he goes ahead to talk about how the facility uh, was uh, going to have some 10 kilometers of uh, interconnected urban roads and all of that. $83 million secured in 2016. You're claiming that you sec secured funding for this in 2018. Who do we believe you? Right. Nobody. I don't think anybody in this administration has ever said that we secured the funding. Nobody ever said that. But the contracting... The actual contracting. Okay. It's one thing to dream. And for another thing for the dream no, to be actualized. Securing funding. Yes. Dreaming. You, I mean, are you, are you being fair to the as well administration when you say they were dreaming when that. they secure the fund? I'll come to yeah. that. You go to tell a lender that give me money to do a road. He okay. said, okay, I'll give you the money. Then you go to parliament. Parliament approves. Okay. That's it. Okay. You are supposed to negotiate with the lender. Then you negotiate with the contractor to come and build the road for you. Yeah, but, but the processes had started you. Yes, let me tell you. Even the Bokwas I mean, yes. interchange you're talking yes. about, mm -hmm. it was supposed to be a three-tier. Okay. We managed to do a four-tier with the same amount of money. How but you that? agree that the processes, the project itself... We, we, we cut the sword. Mm -hmm. The senior minister right. cut the sword mm -hmm. then. Cut the sword for the construction. The road was commissioned by His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nanado Danko Akufado. So under what circumstance would the NDC claim credit for that? The parliament, is it made of only NDC? Uh, out of, no, out of never. The, I mean, in terms of road construction, funding is the most critical aspect, you agree? Let me remind you and the viewers that it's not been long, some time back, some money was secured for the building of hospitals. Mm -hmm. Thereafter, what did they use the money for? To do research for a political party. That funding could have been diverted to do any other thing. We didn't divert that money. We applied the money to a just cause. And even, not even three-tier interchange anymore, but four-tier. But why are we you got not acknowledging the fact that it was started we do, we way do, back in we 2016? Do, we always acknowledge that the funding was gotten mm -hmm. before the, right. uh, that. Let me tell you, the Gifa road, mm -hmm. the Gifa uh, interchange, right. the military... Um, yeah. Bema Camp Road, yeah. the, the, the dream was actually conceived by under, uh, J. E. Kufo, President J. E. Kufo, yeah. okay, under the leadership of Dr. Uh, Anani. Yeah. But what happened? We gave credit to them because they came, they executed the project and completed it. That's why we gave it to them. Yeah. So that's what they deserve. Okay? Yeah. And again, I think by my respected uh, lead minority mm. leader mm. ranking i respect him so much he's my senior right now if you come to the uh, tamamoto we run about phase one mm -hmm. it is a grant not even a loan right the grant was signed by the honorable ayuko butchi mm -hmm. the minister for foreign affairs right. now they want to claim credit for it but that is not how we do it any government that executes any project should take credit for it. In this instance, this they never did anything. They didn't cut the sword in the first place. Uh, it's so a, how do you claim for you or the funding? Because okay, I, I have a, a, a hard copy of what it is that uh, Abuja had said, and uh, of course this is the document here. He points to 2016, June 2016, and he says in June 2016, they indeed secured 55 million Japanese JICA funding for the term, term interchange phase one. I just said that. It was yes. a grant. Yes. Who signed the, the, the grant? But of course, it was, it was initiated in 2016. Of course. I told you, it's just a dream. A go governance how is, is a continuous how is funding, governance is how a, is funding a dream. Are you, are you being fair to yes, the people? Yes, of course. Mm. Constantly, we don't have enough. We are constantly looking outside, either to get the 
commercial facility right. or a grant mm -hmm. to come in and, I mean, cause the development of our nation. Mm. Now, if you go to talk to the Japan, the um, government and people of Japan, that right. please, we need uh, an interchange at this point. Mm -hmm. Please help us. Right. We are doing one. I will not name the place. We are doing one currently. Now, it will not materialize under the leadership of Nanado Danko Akufado, but the next government, inshallah, which, my, which will be uh, Dr. Uh, Mahamudu Baumia. Now, Nana Adodanko Akufado cannot claim credit for what he's doing now for an interchange to be built in another city of the country. You get it? It's a dream which must happen because governance is a continuous process. Okay? We are all here to develop the nation. You dream about something, the technocrats will start the paperwork, correspondence here and there. Mm -hmm. Then one day, the signatures are signed, are put on the document, and the funding comes. We give it to a contractor, and the job is executed. Exactly what happened. Tema phase two is just about to start. We didn't even put it. Okay. If you look at our document, Honestly, we didn't yes, include... It's not contained. Yes, it's mm -hmm. not contained, because only 15% of the job has been done. If we put it in the document, then... I come before you, you may say, ah, but what is going on? We just sent our reporters there, nothing is happening. Mm -hmm. So how come? The construction takes time. It's only 15% now. Mm -hmm. And when it gets high to a higher percentage, mm -hmm. you see actual earthwork and other things going on there. That is when we report. And as I told you, okay. we are having so many of this happening. Mm -hmm. On the Akusombo Road, we are having two interchanges. Inshallah, mm -hmm. we will get them executed before 2024. Often call, we are having about four. Even the Temamoto Way, uh, May motorway, mm -hmm. the, 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 the most talked about uh, Tema Accra motorway. Right. Inshallah, this year, hopefully, it will come on, on stream. Mm -hmm. And we are having about four uh, interchanges on that road. We are not even talking about that. Okay. Um, we'll talk about the other interchanges it's raising concerns about. But since you're talking about the Tema motorway, I need to indicate that, of course, personally, we've also been doing some works on that stretch. Uh, and it's what we're now describing as a deadly highway. Uh, are you, of course, conversant with, with the challenges on that stretch? And what plans do you have as government towards either expanding, rehabilitating the road? Because it's become, uh, you know, a, a stretch that many residents and uh, commuters who ply that route say is very deadly. Indeed. Uh, His Excellency, the President, has always had uh, the Tema Accra motorway in mind to construct. Mm. If you could remember, I think this road has been very topical in the past two, three years. Even I can say from 2018, mm. when the government wanted to even do the road by itself. Mm. And a lot of contractors were, were sounded out to come and bid and other things. Mm. But we realized that we don't have enough resources to do that. Mm -hmm. And now we are looking at a PPP arrangement between the the, the, the government of Ghana and private developers. So as phase two may not happen as planned? Phase two? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Are you talking about the, the, the we yes. run about? Oh, okay, not the run about, the main The main stretch. road. Yes, the main stretch. Yes, so that's the main. That okay. is not, it's so that's not phase. Different. There are two different yes. separate projects. Okay, okay. Right. if you like, maybe mm -hmm. the, the main, the phase one. Mm -hmm. okay. The Tema yes. Accra um, motorway. Right. And the government has it in, in mind, in the, there are our plans to extend it from um, Tema right down through the Tetequashi interchange mm -hmm. to Neo plan. Okay. okay, but for now we are just looking at the, from Tema motorway runabout down to uh, Tetequashi mm -hmm. interchange. Okay. And as we speak now, mm -hmm. uh, talks are ongoing mm -hmm. between the Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Roads and some other uh, agencies like Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund. Mm -hmm. And I'm, 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 I can assure your viewers and uh, the good people of Ghana that, inshallah, this year, mm -hmm. uh, my boss himself and uh, His Excellency the President will be making a pronouncement on them because we know how deadly that route could be. In the meantime, the, minister, um, the Ghana Highways Authority mm -hmm. are always out there trying to patch up using uh, asphalt to patch concrete. Yeah, today, yeah, that's, 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 so that's the problem on the yes, stretch. Which is you know. not helping so mm -hmm, much. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, we cannot avoid uh, maintaining the road mm -hmm. to avoid uh, fatal accidents on the road. There are safety concerns as well. Uh, some drivers using unauthorized U turns on the stretch. Safety wise, what are you putting in place? 
Uh, that I've, I've noticed that, right. uh, and, and there are several along, along the road. Mm. I think the security agencies are also doing their bit because once in a while you see them at those spots trying to arrest motorists and to let them know that it is uh, not safe for them and for uh, innocent motor, uh, I mean, like pedestrian, I mean, road users on that stretch mm. of the road. Uh, on our part, we will just advise all Ghanaians, all those who re, uh, live on that corridor of the road, to be very conscious of their safety mm -hmm. because motorways are motorways mm -hmm. this is where speed limits extend up to 120 mm -hmm. or more so if you think that you can do a u-turn you might not be lucky mm -hmm. and you get hit by another vehicle okay uh, let's move on with the conversation on the interchanges because uh, we left off with uh, the term motorway interchange and that's why i had to bring that the other aspect about suhomi interchange and there's the uh, obiche b as well which you pointed out the minority is still contending that all of these facilities had their fundings sourced by the SWA administration, at least in some of the cases for the Zoom and um, OBGB, for instance, the MPs pointing out that they were part of the gang of six roads. I'm sure that you know the technical definition for that. So these two that they are claiming, what's your response to that? Okay. Let me just read this for you. Okay. And which document is this, right? Yeah, this is our, uh, our press release okay, that we, right. we did. I don't know if you have a copy Yeah, or not. we have that. Yeah. All right. So if you look at the OBHB Interchange Phase 1, mm -hmm. the award date is 26 October 2016. The award date, 26 mm -hmm. October 2016. Right. If you don't have a copy, I can No, no I have that. I, I have that. Right. Yeah. Now, the, the works actually started. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mobilization was actually given in august 2018 mm -hmm. then actual work started in 2019 so why how do you take credit for that such a job okay you can you can okay, have this document so 2016 yes it's a public document yes that's yes, 2016 mm -hmm. october right that award was done mm -hmm. the start date is 18th january 2019 works Somebody cut the sword for that works to be started in 2019. And you want to say that you did it. Fine, you did the award. We give you that credit. Mm -hmm. Who executed it? It doesn't really make sense for somebody to get the funding. And governance is a continuous process. I'll, I'll repeat that again. We are put into uh, positions of trust to bring development to the people. You bring funding. The people say, thank you, we don't want you no long. You leave. Okay. Somebody comes. There's no works on the ground. Mm -hmm. The person does that. Who should take credit? Okay, let me ask you this question. You have pointed out in the same document that seven more would have been completed by 2024. Uh, if another government comes up, say, from another political party, right, in 2025, and commissions these same projects that you source funding for, and commissions them and claims credit for that. Would you be happy that yes, indeed we'll President very, Akufado we'll, initiated the process we, and we'll, someone we'll, else we'll, is claiming credit? We will credit not have it. any qualms about that. We will never have any qualms about it. I just told you, under His Excellency Nana Dodankwa, we are working with the Japanese for them to do another interchange for us. Mm. It will not happen in, before 2024. Right. But then, whoever takes the realms of affairs would take credit for that. How about that? That's how it should be. We have so many abandoned projects in the country, across the country. Example is the um, Kwafukrum Apeja Road. Okay. They came in, they left it like that. For eight years, nothing was done on that road. We came in, we completed. You get it? That is why we need credit for that road. We can't even give the credit to President Kofu because we did it. We could have also abandoned that project. We didn't do that. We did it. So we need credit for that. Otherwise, mm -hmm. people who abandon projects, governments who abandon projects just to initiate new ones to get credit for them. How about that? We have examples, affordable housing. NDC came in, they didn't do anything about it, which is not good because a lot of investment would have gone inside. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's get to the score then because you've been assessing yourself in terms of the percentage of good roads, motorable roads that, and fair roads that you've uh, constructed across the country. There's a problem coming up with that one. 
uh, because the period that you're working with, the document that the president has submitted to parliament, is working with the period starting from 2009 to 2016 and comparing that to 2022. And in the document, uh, you're pointing out that you, of course, moved the road networks uh, of this country from somewhere 78,000, a raw figure, to close to 94,000. But the 94,000 you're pointing out in that document is estimated. There's a question mark around that figure. On what basis did, did you assess to know that the networks have been expanded when you have not carry out, carried out any uh, research or have not deployed your regional offices to carry out a scientific research to know that the network has been expanded to 94,000? All right. So when we talk about 94,203 mm -hmm. kilometers of the network size, right. it means that the roads in the country that we have in our database as public roads, simply, and it um, includes paved and unpaved roads. Yes, but how did you arrive at the number? Because the number is being questioned. Yes, right. I'll come to that. Mm. I'll come to that. Right. As we speak now, mm -hmm. okay, the, 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 the data we provided, we even indicated it, it's a provisional data. Yeah. We have consultants, KNUST, mm -hmm. that is doing this inventory for us. They are done with the urban roads. Mm -hmm. They are moving, they are now currently on the feeder roads. Okay, and the urban roads, until now, mm -hmm. From as of 2017, mm -hmm. was 14,000. When they finished, it is now 36,000 kilometers, mm -hmm. urban roads alone. Right. Feeder roads even will be higher. Th that's your prediction, and that's where the problem yes. is. Because you are quoting the 94,000 yes. as an estimated figure, and working with that to say, well, we've expanded the road networks by, say, 27%. You're putting out figures based on an estimate. Sir, we are not saying we expanded the network. Mm -hmm. We are recognizing the public roads in Ghana. That's what simply what it based is. on a research. A research from KNUST. No, what, the what, KNUST right. is still ongoing. Mm -hmm. They just did one department. Right. That's the urban roads. Yes, they are continuing with the uh, feeder roads. So it's not a complete exercise. It's not a complete. So the figures are not accurate. That's why we indicate that it's provisional. Yes, These so, figures so are from our agencies. You? How then do we believe you if you put out the figure to say, well, twenty-seven percent of it has been done? when the estimate scientifically is not even provisional data mm -hmm. is allowed everywhere no i mean until it's confirmed why would the president come to parliament and work with an estimated figure and then claim and pronounce to the nation that we've done more scientifically than provisional government? data is always allowed until the authentic so the president was working with the provisional exactly data. that's why he indicated so how then do we believe the president believe the president because that is what even as i told you 94 let me tell you yes Yes, we indicate that it's right. provisional. We are not categorical because right. it will be more. In our own estimation today, if you are supposed to do this document again, mm -hmm. we, I can put it to you that it will be more than 100,000 kilometers. It could be the less. The public road. No, it, it be cannot less. be less. It cannot be yeah, less. But we they, never know. The we communities, know, right? settlements are expanding daily. And we need to recognize the roads that will lead to those settlements mm -hmm. and so that we can plan for them mm -hmm. and then uh, develop them. Scientifically speaking, people. are you aware of the road network that was handed over to the Ecuador administration. Yes, that is 78,400. Because that's not an estimate. That's a figure. Of course, an absolute we recognize one. Why are you then working with an estimate and claiming that you've done more roads than the That's other? what I'm telling you, that these estimates are done periodically. As we speak now, mm. the KNUST, University of Science and Technology, is the consultants for this particular project. And they are doing it. It's ongoing. Mm. The Urban Roads Department one is done. And now they've realized that from 14,000, it has increased to 36,000. Look at it. Rural areas, okay. the feeder roads, it would even be more. You, and, we, and, and I want you to admit the fact that it's your own projection. Of course. Th this is not I've, a I've fact. admitted that, yes. yes. I've said it. And we so it could be less as well. It can be less. Why are you ruling that out? <laughs> that's, that's the, because, that's problem. because these figures we speaking to right. now mm -hmm. were given by agencies, mm -hmm. urban roads, feeder roads, mm -hmm. and Ghana Highways right. Authority. Okay, they are, they, these are their projects, mm -hmm. projections. Right. Okay, because they are on the ground daily, mm -hmm. and they provided that, um, this information. Okay. Now we have given it to an external consultant to do it for us. Mm -hmm. And we, I'm telling you that it can never be less, because daily, 
community expand. If you get to Kumasi, between Santasi and Anyu and Kwanta, used to be like bushes. Now, go there and see. Communities from Santasi right up to Anyu and Kwanta. You go to Kasua, the same thing happened. Honorable Minister, that's your prediction. It's your own projection. Of it's course. not bad. I've, I've, I've not run away. I'm asking the question okay. because, for instance, if you take a look at the period before 2009, uh, this would have come into portions of President Kufour's era and then, um, of course, President Rawlings. President Rawlings was dealing with about 48,000 kilometers of road in terms of the road network expansion. He left at that time um, by 2001, uh, moving into 2002, uh, the country with that road network, with 72% of it being motorable. And these are absolute figures. So concretely speaking, we know that in nominal terms, he's done the highest. So why then should we believe the president, if he's working with an estimate to project, that he's done more? All right. That, yeah, that, that, you, you get the source of my question. Let, let me tell you, President Rawlings yeah, right. didn't leave with 48,000. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, it, which figures do you have there? 37,000. Okay. 321. Then Kufu came first year, it went to 48,000. But, but he left it with 48,000 because by then, in 2001, obviously, well, you can't, would you have can't be very down. sure because you don't know. <laughs> now, you're, now, you're now, now you're doubting my figures. Now you're doubting my figures. But all the yeah, same. But, so, so you get the, the, yes. the point I'm making. All that the same. We're dealing with an estimate. You. Don't, don't you think so? If you, yes, we are dealing with mm -hmm. estimates. Right. Okay. And I've already admitted right. that. Now, if you come to the figures mm -hmm. properly, mm -hmm. One moment. Yeah. Now, when the NDC were leaving power mm -hmm. in 2017, they had a total network size of mm -hmm. 78,402 kilometers. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, out of these kilometers, mm -hmm. these are the roads that they, they knew okay. about. Okay. Now, out of this number, 23% was paved mm -hmm. and 20, 77 percent unpaved. Okay. Now, out of that number, 78,402 again, mm -hmm. the road condition mix looked like this. We have good, fair, and poor. Mm -hmm. NDC had 39 percent good roads, 32 mm -hmm. percent fair roads, okay. then 29 percent poor roads okay. when we came in if even if we are to use the 78 kilometers okay, okay. We, we, let, we let's agree that 78 kilometers we have improved and what's because your, what's your score yes well, our score now mm -hmm. is 27 percent paved okay we have added at least four percentage points to it mm -hmm. now that means that we have reduced the poor condition from 29 percent to 22 percent and now currently the fair condition has also improved from 32 to 34 percent but we are dealing with the provisional figure of uh, 94, 94, and that's where the opposition has a problem that they, why not they work they... with an absolute figure uh, instead of working with an estimate i just give you examples mm -hmm. that kaswa was uh, virtually um separated from accra now there's no separation again right. Santasi to Anyuan Kwanta, we have so many of those examples. Mm. So our engineers have recognized those places mm. so that we are planning towards them even before the consultants bring their, their, their findings. Mm. But I assure you that it will be more than 100,000 when it comes finally. It will come out soon. Mm. I'm giving you okay. by the end of the third quarter, the consultants would have brought it. Okay, so which means that you, you would carry out a new assessment, which you're calling the, are road, the road inventory. Yes. Okay, so the process is already started. Yes, it's started. And you're expecting and that now with the, with, the, with the urban roads, they've moved to the feeder roads mm. and to the highway. But highway is not right. likely to expand that much because mm -hmm. highways normally link major towns, mm -hmm. uh, like regional capitals. Mm -hmm. We have uh, six regions. Mm -hmm. 
So that means that we are not going to recognize those roads that lead to those uh, capitals as the, mm -hmm. the trunk roads. Mm -hmm. And we are better to just be the, the, I mean, to not be as much as what we experience under the urban roads mm -hmm. and what we experience under the federal roads. Okay. There's the question as to how come you're dealing with, uh, in absolute terms, the construction of 615 kilometers of actual construction as compared to uh, bitumen surfacing and asphalt overlays that are way above a thousand kilometers. Uh, why? What's what's drawing you know the government's attention to increasing you know the asphalt overlays we have when there are say other communities spread across the country that just need some you know first coat if I could call it that way of road networks. What, what's the science informing that from from your outfits? All right, we recognize that yes. every part of the country needs roads because if you have good roads, the economy will grow at even a faster pace. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, because of the limited resources, we are not able to do all of that at the same time. So we need to prioritize. And we had already done some roads mm -hmm. earlier right. by previous governments, and those roads have deteriorated. If you go and patch them, in a short while, they get back to their bad conditions again. So His Excellency decides that, why don't we add some asphalt concrete on them to seal them, protect them, and that means that they will last longer. Instead of going back to them every other year, you could save, protect the road and make some savings, go to the other areas and do the roads for them. Even as we do the asphalt overlay, the record says that we do all other roads Yes, that's what we, 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 we have done so far. Mm -hmm. And you agree with me that um, those roads that we have uh, done asphalt overlays mm -hmm. are so good. Except to say that there are a few areas that we have noticed some uh, mm -hmm. uh, failed portions mm -hmm. which the engineers are going to tackle. Okay. Uh, the president was raising fears that, of course, he, he, he would have wished that every single community would be tired, would have a good road network, except to say that the resources are not enough. Uh, in that regard, is he suggesting that uh, given uh, economic condition, we may not have new projects? What, what's the plan and outlook for this year? Because of course, uh, you started with the year of roads, did year of roads part two or phase two, if I could call it that way. W what's in the sector for 2023? All right. So for roads, we can never stop maintaining roads and we cannot never stop uh, constructing new roads. As we speak now, engineers are on site, contractors are on site and they are constructing roads, they are building roads. Mm -hmm. But what it means is that because of the economic challenges, we, we, we cannot scale up mm -hmm. the road construction. We can only scale down because across all the ministries, mm -hmm. our budgets have been cut and that's the implication is that we cannot begin new projects. But the ongoing projects, we are paying contractors who are on site to go on and do it. And let me just add that, and the source of funding for roads mm -hmm. is not entirely GOG. Mm -hmm. GOG, government of Ghana through the taxpayers are doing roads, maintaining and doing new roads. But we also have development partners, as we said, right. the Tema uh, motorway, Run about being sponsored by the government, people of Japan. So many other grants are, and also we also have commercial facilities that we bring in mm -hmm. to do the roads. Right. Yes, so we will continue to do the roads. Mm -hmm. uh, some facilities were granted before even this uh, situation we mm -hmm. uh, came about, and those projects will keep on going. Government but, but there will be no, there will be no new roads. There it, will be new roads as well, but just that we will scale down. If we were to uh, pl we plan to do like 10 roads okay. now, we cannot do the 10 roads. We may do five or less, depending on the... the so the how balance. are you going to do the scale down? Because a lot of communities will be worried now, saying, uh, well, okay, you promised that you are going to construct our road. Is our road going to be affected, by the way? So many of our viewers will be asking the question out there. So how are you going to go about that scaling down? Uh, in a way that will be proportional, that would uh, also ensure that there's... I don't know if to call it regional balance because no region wants to be on, on, on the yes. other side. Yes, I know. I understand you because everybody wants good roads. Right. But the challenge we have is real and it's only Ghana across the globe. All countries are reeling under this COVID and Ukraine war and other things. 
UK, US, everywhere. If you Google, you will see it. It's real. Yeah. Now we are also facing the same challenges. And this is just a short while. And I can say that in a short while, things will improve. And if that happens, but before then, we have planned pro projects. Okay. Okay. We don't just get up and decide that I want to go and do Mr. Suge's uh, <laughs> home rules. We have planned programs mm. for the ministries and agencies. Mm. So we have them. So we say, okay, now that we don't have enough resources to go and do all the roads, mm. what do we do? Okay. We look at the amount of traffic that pass goes on a particular road. Okay. Then we decide that, no, this one is more critical. Mm. Let's get this done. Mm -hmm before this one but the assurance is that every road will be tackled over time okay but it boils down to revenue if i'm to get the assessment right and that's where some experts say we shouldn't have taken away uh, for instance the road tools because it was a critical revenue measure that was was pumping in revenue for the ministry to at least if not do the major highways, you could do some, some feeder roads here and there or something that would, of course, ease the burden of those in the inner cities and less privileged areas. What's government's consideration and assessment around this whole debate, this whole conversation as to whether or not we should bring back the road tolls or not? I'm sure that you've been receiving a number of calls. Of course, to your I do. On that. But as I said, yeah, I'm not part of the cabinet. Yeah. I don't can't go into the thinking of the government. But let me tell you why the road tools were taken away. You know, when the e-levy came in, the government decided that the road tools were going to be scrapped. Mm, okay, yeah. so, but even before that particular budget was approved, there was chaos on all our uh, tolling boots. Mm -hmm. So my boss thought it wise that there was no need for a life to be lost before this happened. Yeah. And we knew that uh, the good uh, parliament was going to, I mean, like, give us the approval. So he wrote that it should be suspended. Right. Okay, rule tools were only suspended pending the approval of the budget. Yes, we used to get around 70, 78 million per year, and that's a lot of money mm -hmm. and can do something. Right. But then in the um, e-levy, mm -hmm. it was a component of a chunk of money. Okay. If we had approved e-levy at that decent, and if the e-levy had worked the way it was conceived, I'm sure that we will not be talking about this today. But unfortunately, the e-levy e -levy failed us. It didn't work out the way we planned it. And that is why we are not talking about it. I know that over time, decision makers, the cabinet, the president's cabinet will come out again. Mm. If you are to introduce rule tools, why not? Mm. If you feel that, we should, but let me also say that rule tools in Ghana was the list in the separation. We paid In 50, terms of how much we how paid? Much we, paid. Okay. It, we paid 50 pesos. Mm. Meanwhile, they said, quench out the effort. You pay 50 pesos, mm -hmm. but you want to have quality rules like we see in the advanced countries. It's, it's very difficult. If it's to come, I'm sure that the president, the cabinet, the parliament mm -hmm. will all sit down and look for um, figures that will be okay mm -hmm. for the motorists to pay mm -hmm. and for us to get enough revenue to be able to work on but, but what would be the modality for for the announcement the finance minister made that um, for some new some selected new roads that road toll component will be introduced w will this apply to all major highways that you'd be you be no, I, I don't think i think the the, mm. the finance minister was very categorical mm. that only roads going forward we have plans as okay. i told you right. for the tema Accra tema motorway mm. that is going to be expanded into 10 lanes okay with about four interchanges we are on on it and if it does happen we are going to toll it to be able to pay back the investment that somebody else is going to bring into that road mm. and beyond that we're also looking at uh, kasua to takradi mm. and if it does happen we will toll the roads again to be able to pay for the investments that are going to it. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, we are not going to have tolls being taken. At the, at, no, the finance minister didn't mean that. Okay. We were going to have tolls taken at the islands on single carriage lanes right, and yes. other things. He meant the PPP projects mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. are yet to even kick start. Okay. Uh, Honorable, you, you have an ambitious target of doing some seven more interchanges. So let's quickly run through some of them. Uh, w which areas are you doing that? And do you have timelines as to 
possibly um, when th these projects may, may, may be completed? Uh, and w I mean, in which communities are we going to find uh, some of these uh, interchanges that, that you're, um, I mean, planning to construct? The um, document we have here says that by the end of 2024, all of these uh, components will be done. But specifically speaking, for these unique projects, do we have specific timelines for that? Of course, all the road, the interchanges that we included, the mm. seven, right. all of them, mm. and let me list them. Okay. Um, we have the Nungwa interchange mm -hmm. that is ongoing. Okay. We have Ajirin Gano, okay. that's also ongoing. Okay. We have PTC interchange in Takradi, okay. it's ongoing. Okay. We have Flower Port, which is ongoing. We also have Bungbaria. The Wenya, Pram Pram, Pram, Pram yeah. and Savannah interchanges. We are talking about Tema, Tema runabout yeah. towards Aflao, uh, yeah, Pram Pram. Right. Yes, that stretch. Yeah. As we speak now, they are doing the interchanges before they do the slip roads yeah. or the service lane yeah. roads before they come back to the main road. Yeah. It's also ongoing. Then Obeche Bilamte uh, interchange phase two yeah. is also ongoing. Okay. Now, these are what we are talking about. I also mentioned to you. Yeah that even we didn't include the Ofanko to Nsawom Road. Okay. As you speak now, a contractor is on that stretch of road. And on that stretch, we have four interchanges, which will be done before 20. But, but you've not listed we did, that. We didn't list yet. it. So that would have made it, say, eight. Eight. Or okay. more. Or more, okay. Okay. But are we four not concentrating them. too much on, on the Greater Accra region? Because they seem to have, have more, as you're pointing out. That's intelligent. Okay. Greater Accra. The road in fact, uh, of Fanko to Greater Accra okay. is not Greater Accra Road. Right. It's a national road. I had an accident at Chichure. Oh, really? You know where I come from? Originally from Saboba in the northern region. Right. Now represent the good people of Pro West yes. and the Bono East right. region. But I almost lost my life on that road. So the road belongs to the nation. All the regions and even everybody in the country plies that road because it links the major two cities of the country and that is the reason why yeah. we are trying to dualize from Accra straight up to Kumase but because of the limited resources that we have yeah. we are not doing Ofanko to uh, Nsawem we've done from Nsawem to Apeja okay and we have also signed co co uh, contracts with companies to do four bypasses four. to ease yeah, to ease the traffic on the Kumasi, uh, Accra Road, Stretch. we can do all at once. But for now, we sign contracts. But the work is, uh, is, uh, is yet to start. So it tells you. And even we did include another two interchanges. Okay. One at uh, a Shamai runabout mm -hmm. on the Akusambu Road. Okay. And there's another one at, uh, when you get towards uh, Akusambu, I've forgotten the name of runabout. So there's you, you, yes, there's that. another one. Yeah. And the, as we speak now, the contractor is on site. But the percentage of work that they have done yeah. is very low. So that is why we are not reporting on them now. Yeah. But if, you, if I return in a month or two, right. I'm sure we can stop. Definitely we'll be having the conversation again. But are you certain that by 2024, all these seven... Will, will Inshallah, by 2024, seven. all the seven listed in the white book the book. <laughs> I, the I like book. the way you're calling it, the white book. Yes. Right. The Th book that's your that was annexed mm -hmm. to the president's mm -hmm. uh, message to, on the state of the nation. Mm -hmm. Inshallah, mm -hmm. by 2024, all of them will be done. Because we are talking about, about interchanges that works have appreciated uh, significantly. Mm -hmm. Are you paying the contractors? Yes, of course. We are paying them. We are paying them. We know we, do, we have uh, issues with finance, finances, but we are paying them. Mm -hmm not the way they would appreciate you, you know why i'm asking by the way i know because right. the contractors always want money to go to site <laughs> yes. complete their works and also other things but um we don't have enough resources but the little that comes into the kitty mm. is given to the contractors mm. to go back to work it is when they are paid that they will be happy to go back to work because uh, if you delay payment to them the work delays and maybe they have to do variations here and there because cost of materials and other things are going up. As we speak, we pay them. Every month, we have money going out from the ministry, from the finance ministry, that goes to contractors. Yes.
Oh, well, Stephen Jalula, we need to go, but um, I'll give you the opportunity to speak to the people of Ghana. Of course, uh, they are the ones you're working for. What will be your message to them? As we well, in every story? democracy, mm. it is good for uh, criticisms and it's very healthy for our uh, growing democracy in Ghana. The opposition always speaks and we listen. And it makes us set up and to do the right things for the good people of Ghana. The opposition have spoken. My good friend, the uh, new minority leaders, mm -hmm. released mm -hmm. a press statement. My good friend, Isaac uh, J. Menza also spoke on the floor of parliament. But I want them to know, even let me just add something little. Right. My good friend, uh, Honorable uh, Isaac J. Mensah right. made reference to some two roads in this country. So it's that were constructed right. under uh, His Excellency J. M. Um, John Mahama. Mm -hmm. That cannot be right. Uh, which roads? Do, do you remember the roads? Yes. One of them is uh, the Amang Road mm -hmm. that was funded by Gofuls. Okay. It okay. wasn't a gym. It, 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 was, right. it was awarded on the gym. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the road actually was completed in 2019 mm -hmm. and commissioned by the regional minister of the Western region on behalf of his excellency, the president. So how can a road completed in 2016 be commissioned in 2019? It doesn't add up. Mm -hmm. Secondly, he mentioned some Dabuasi road. That road was just surface dressing, bitumen, bitum, bituminous road. Now we came, we revised the contract. I made it asphalt. And it was done under Nanado Danko Akufando. So how do you give credit, give credit to uh, GM? You could give him credit for awarding the contract, but not executing the contract, and even revising it to, to suit the nature of that. So um, I would want to urge Ghanaians to be patient with his excellency, see Nanado Danko Akufando. We are going through rough times. And fortunately, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. They should be patient. Mm. The Ministry of Roads and Highways, through my boss, the Honorable uh, Christian Makwata, MP for Etiwa West, is doing everything to ensure that good roads come towards you. Mm. And it surprises me when you go around the country and the work, amount of work that my boss, through uh, the president, through my boss, ha have done. Mm. The two of them have done for the good people of Ghana. Right. Let's be patient. Mm. The system will work again. And everybody will get good roads to travel on. Thank you. And also, let's and, uh, also yeah. <laughs> um, send greetings to the good people of Pru West. Obviously, I know you are going to do that. Them <laughs> that I am here as a, a you, member. You're of up Arms. and running again. Exactly. You'll be going again. Inshallah, when when the time comes and right. they, they, they 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 want me to mm. run for them, mm. we go through a lot of processes. And if they approve, I'll come right. again. So I greet you, everybody, wherever you are. And of course, be on the lookout for him. He'll be in your constituency again. So uh, that's uh, the deputy. Minister uh, responsible for roads and highways, uh, Stephen Jalula, joining us here uh, on the probe. Thanks for those listening to us on Joy 99.7 FM here on the Joy News Channel, Love 99.5 in Kumasi and affiliates across the country. Well, this is the probe, and you've heard it from the Roads and Highways Ministry. I'm Lester Sugan. Log on to myjoyonline.com. We have stories for you there. Have a good night.